Hello and welcome to a discussion on the development of the respiratory system. So the respiratory bud appears in the fourth week as an outpouching of the foregut endoderm at the junction of the pharyngeal foregut and the caudal foregut, right? And it's quite essential to know that the epithelium and the glands within the respiratory system, they develop from the endoderm, whereas the smooth muscle, the connective tissue and the cartilage they develop from splanchnic mesoderm, which you can also call visceral or lateral plate mesoderm, right? Then if you look at um, normal lung development, you need to have fetal breathing movements for you to have normal lung development. Those can actually be visualized using real-time real ultrasonography, right? And if you have oligohydramnios, that is too little amniotic fluid, that can actually affect the normal lung development and you're born with hypoplastic lungs that will be collapsed. Right? So you actually need uh, amniotic fluid uh, to aspirate for you to have normal lung development. Right? And that amniotic fluid at birth, it has to be expelled via the oral cavity and the nose and some of it actually goes into the pulmonary circulation and some of it goes into the lymphatic uh, system. Right? And for you to also have normal lung development, you should have interactions between the endoderm and the mesoderm. The endoderm induces the mesoderm to form the smooth muscle, the cartilage, the connective tissue, and the pulmonary blood vessels. Whereas the mesoderm or the mesenchyme induces the endoderm to form the epithelium and the glands. Right? So the mesenchyme will express fibroblast growth factor 10, which induces the endoderm. Whereas in 10, the endoderm will uh, express WNT7B, which induces the mesenchyme to form its structures, right? And it's also key to remember that development of the lung uh, does not stop at birth. It continues all the way up to nine years after birth, right? I'll talk about that when I mention the stages, right? And growth of the lung after birth is mainly due to an increase in uh, the number of the alveoli, not necessarily the size. That will be different when you look at the development of the kidneys, where at birth you are born with all your nephrons, about 1.5 million nephrons in each kidney. And growth of the kidney after birth will be as a result of increase in size of pre-existing nephrons. Right. Then you can also get hypoplastic lungs as a result of congenital diaphragmatic hernias, which are more common on the left, uh, if you have failure of closure of the pluriperitoneal membranes, uh, leaving that foramen bogdalic, which allows the intestines to rapidly grow into the pericardio peritoneal canals where you're supposed to have the lung bud growing into. Right? So if you then look at the stages of lung development, there is the pseudoglandular phase, which is week five to week 16. Other fancier texts would say week six to week 16. Then you have the canaliculi phase, which is week 16 to week 26. Then you have the terminal sac phase, which is the 26th week to birth. Then you have the alveolar phase, which is from around eight, eight month intrauterine life to nine years after birth. Right. So within the pseudoglandular phase, you'd have a branching of the lung primordia all the way to the terminal bronchioles. And children born within this phase will not survive. One of the major reasons why they won't survive is there won't be enough surfactant and you also won't have uh, capillary contact with the alveoli as well as the alveoli themselves. Then week 16 to week 26, that's the canaliculi phase. The canaliculi phase will be characterized by appearance of respiratory bronchioles. So each terminal bronchial will divide into one to two or even more respiratory bronchioles. And the respiratory bronchioles in 10 will divide into three to six alveolar ducts. Right. Then the third stage will be the terminal sec phase where you have appearance of primitive alveoli or primordial alveoli. This primitive alveoli, some of them will actually start to appear within the canaliculi phase. And children born will survive in this, uh, in this phase. Why? Because you also have contact now of this primitive alveoli with the developing capillaries. And surfactant production would have started around week 20 from your type 2 pneumocytes. Remember, they're going to be type 2 pneumocytes and type 1 pneumocytes. The type 1 pneumocytes are going to be the lining cells within the alveoli, and they're going to be mostly the epithelium. They're simple squamous. They make up 95% of the lining surface, yet they're only 
Then if you look at the type two pneumocytes, they're the most numerous and they produce the surfactant. Infants born without uh, sufficient surfactant who suffer from infantile respiratory distress syndrome, also known as hyaline membrane disease. The reason why they suffer from a respiratory distress syndrome is that surfactant normally should lower surface tension. And if you're born without the surfactant, there's an increase in surface tension within the lungs, right? Then the last stage is the alveolar phase, which is the eighth month to nine years after birth. And within this phase, you form mat uh, mature alveoli. And this is the most ideal phase for you to have parturition, right? Then you can also have an accessory lung lobe. Um, normally they're okay on the base of the left lung. You can also have an azygous uh, lung lobe when the superior uh, bronchial tree uh, actually divides going superior and medial to the arc of the azygous vein instead of lateral. The azygous vein will end up forming an arc um, or a groove on the lung, which then results in the appearance of a of an azygous lung lobe. Right. That's just about it. Thank you.